Thank you, and good evening, everybody. Um, the appointment of a new head is a hugely important event in the life of Phillips Academy, and as Oscar said, one that's only happened 15 times in 233 years. A great deal of thought and effort went into the selection process, and I'd like to thank everyone here who participated, and that includes many of you. The faculty and staff provided feedback last spring, and that shaped the job description for the next head. The search committee, 12 of us, worked through the summer and fall, and I'm particularly grateful to the faculty members of the committee for the judgment and insight they brought to the task. We reviewed hundreds of resumes and met with dozens of candidates. We learned a lot from these meetings and from visits to various schools and with other educators who weren't candidates. What we learned, no surprise, is that this is a really big job for anyone to handle. To do this job well, you have to be a teacher, a boss, a fundraiser, a mentor, a coach, and a cheerleader. You have to match the energy of the student body, and you have to match the commitment of the faculty. You have to have real passion to do this work. You have to focus on the big picture and bring vision to the role, but you can never forget that the real impact you have is measured through one student at a time, through the, the development of one new teacher at a time, and the appreciation for the work of one staff member at a time. What we also learned is that the secondary school community is looking to Andover to help navigate the way forward in a world that's changing fast. We know that the globe is shrinking. We know that the pace of work is ramped up. We know that technology is mediating access to information in ways that haven't changed so dramatically in hundreds of years. What does this mean for education? That's what we get to figure out together. And let's make sure we continue to measure our successes one student at a time. This morning, Oscar and I sent a letter to the Andover community announcing that John Palfrey will be the next head of school. I couldn't possibly be more pleased or more excited with this appointment. John is a teacher and a student. He brings enormous curiosity to everything he does, coupled with the courage to innovate. He's a builder. He knows how to put programmatic structure around interesting ideas and has the discipline to make sure that those programs have impact. John's best attribute is in knowing how to surface the great ideas that are already bubbling in the organizations he has led. And his starting point is to affirm the great things that are already taking place. To be a leader here takes spark, compassion, flexibility, decisiveness, perseverance, intellect, and a great heart. John has all of those things. John has one other thing in common with the students in the audience this evening. He went to a really good high school. <laughs> Can you imagine his great good fortune? He has the pedigree of an Exeter diploma, and he's about to get an Andover education. <laughs> John Palfrey. Wow, what a great looking group you are. This is very exciting. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to have to get used to all this blue. It's sort of a different color scheme than I'm used to in my, my job. But um, first of all, thank you so much for this warm Andover welcome. I couldn't be more thrilled to be here today. Uh, at the uh, first day of being with you. Uh, this is not yet my official first day. Barbara's got a lot um, more to do, of course. All wonderful things, I have no doubt. Um, but I can't wait to be here in July and with all of you um, uh, at Andover um, for the next chapter in both my life and this school's life, too. Um, I'm just thrilled and grateful to Oscar um, and to Peter and to all the members of the search committee um, for the process that we've gone through. I have learned so much about this school that I had lots of perceptions about, but of course didn't really know you and look forward to getting to know you. I hope you will join me in thanking the search committee um, for their incredibly hard work and particularly to Peter Curry, your incoming trustee uh, president.
and much more important in some ways um, is also the thank you that I think um, is most deeply felt by me at this moment, but I'm sure deeply felt by all of you, um, to the person who has stewarded this school so extraordinarily well for 17 and a half years, um, going on 18. Um, I can't imagine the privilege of coming into a place in better shape than the place um, of Andover now uh, through Barbara Landis Chase's leadership. So I hope you will join me in a huge round of applause for Barbara and thank you to her. I wanted just to say a few words before you go back out into this beautiful night and over to Peresky Commons for dinner um, about my ideas going forward. You should know, of course, that I'm a rookie at this. Um, I'm coming from a, a, a higher ed background, of course, and not secondary schools, so I have a ton to learn and look forward to that. Um, but there are a couple things that I did want to say tonight. Um, the first was, uh, it comes from my, my son. Uh, my son, Jack, is nine years old. And as we were talking about what I might say today and how to introduce myself, he said, Dad, just tell them you're being traded. You're being traded from Harvard to Andover. So I thought I would get a hat and put on my <laughs> baseball cap. And... It's a good color we've got here. Good. So I'm thrilled with the, th the trade and thrilled to be here. Um, a few words just about what I'm so eager to work on and why I'm so excited to be here with you. Um, the first has to do with um, making Andover the best possible place to learn and to live. Um, of course, this starts most fundamentally with you, the students. Um, the best years of my life as an educational matter um, were at Exeter. I realize I have to unlearn a lot of what I learned there. Um, <laughs> But I think there's bad news and good news in that for the students here at Andover. Um, so the, the uh, good news first, which is that it doesn't actually, in my view, get any harder than it got at Exeter. I went to a great college, I went to a great law school um, and graduate school, and it never ever was more intense or harder or more meaningful than it was at Exeter. That's, I think, in some ways, the good news going from here. The bad news is it doesn't get any better than this. This is the best residential education, the best way to learn and the best way to be. So enjoy it and love it. And I look forward to working with you on making this the best that it possibly can be for the next several years as well. I can't wait to be part of that. Second, um, to the faculty and to the staff, I look forward to making this the best possible place also to work and to live. Um, to the faculty, I'm one of you, I'm a teacher, and I can't wait to be a learner from you. I can't wait to be both a leader and a colleague uh, and to be your student in terms of what is the most important possible work I could imagine in the world, which is working here at Andover, a leading school and one that is undertaking to lead um, this generation, this next generation of students. This seems to me the most important calling I could possibly imagine, and I'm grateful to you for what you do, and I can't wait uh, to work with you. And to the staff of the school as well, I know you have been working incredibly hard in light of all of the storms, the hurricanes, other things that have beset Massachusetts recently. Um, I also know from my own work that there is no person in a community who isn't pulling hard in favor of the educational mission. I know that everybody who works in IT and everybody who works in admissions and alumni development and on the grounds crew and uh, to do with sports, you are all pulling toward this one uh, direction, which is toward making this the best educational place in the world. I'm hugely grateful to you and can't wait to work with an amazing staff uh, that I know is here at Andover. There's a philosopher in my field, Marshall McLuhan, there's a wonderful uh, quote which he says, on planet Earth there are no passengers, only crew. And my sense is that as a community, Andover acts that way. This is an only crew community. I can't wait to be part of it. Um, and to the alumni and to those who might in fact be watching on a recorded statement here. Um, the reason I'm so excited in a way to be here is because I've come to know Andover a little through some of my friends who have gone here and have gone on to amazing lives, lives that have been um, meaningful in lots of domains. My friend Amanda Lydon was my first uh, friend in college. She's now an amazing chef on Nantucket, um, and she's just a wonderful, brilliant, uh, amazing uh, Phillips Academy grad. Um, a student I had at Harvard named Chris Hughes, who you probably know has gone on to co-found Facebook and is uh, on a board with me of a foundation 
um, Alexander Hefner, another student I've gotten to know. Um, the uh, list goes on and on of people that I have met from here who are amazingly brilliant and um, changing the world in so many, uh, so many ways. Um, and it is such a privilege to be able to be working with um, this community and thinking about what it means to change the world um, through your education here and what you go on, uh, go on to do. So um, I actually don't want to keep you much longer, but I do want to say thank you um, and to say how excited I am to be joining you and to be joining along with um, this community in uh, many ways um, uh, the most perfect uh, thing I could imagine doing for the next several years of my life to be part of this community. Um, I also wanted to say a hello on behalf of my family um, before I close. I have um, a wonderful wife whose name is Catherine Carter. She turns out not to be your faculty member named Catherine Carter. Um, this may cause some amusement um, going forward. Um, uh, and I have two children, a six-year-old and a nine-year-old. Um, and I was talking to them last night. This was the baseball player, the nine-year-old, and uh, my six-year-old, um, Emmeline. And uh, I said, well, what should I say? What should I say to the end of our community? Um, and uh, they were giving me some ideas. I said, well, really, I want to talk about you. What should I tell them? I'm going to introduce you. Um, and so my daughter, who's six, um, pulled out a sheet of paper. And she said, Dad, right at the top, Dad's speech at Andover, which I did. And she then put a whole bunch of lines down. And then she wrote her name, and then she wrote her brother's name and some more lines. So I'm going to read to you what they said about themselves on this sheet of paper, which I will definitely keep forever because it's totally heartbreaking. Um, but, so here's what it says about Emmeline. Emmeline plays the violin, likes ballet, a bit shy, very nice, <laughs> true, loves cats and dogs, is six years old, but will be seven when she comes to this school. That's Emmeline. Um, and Jack, um, he says, a little bit in sort of boy handwriting, a little kind of more forceful and um, with more space in between the uh, words. Uh, fewer of the words, in fact. I like sports. I'm excited to play sports on campus. Perens, squash, soccer, football, and baseball. No end perens. I have to work on that, Jack. <laughs> I have a dog that I like very much. Anyway, I am so excited to be coming with my family, with my wife, with my two kids, um, with our dog that they like very much, and two cats as well, um, and can't wait to be joining you um, in this next year. Um, and I'm so grateful for the chance uh, to be there. And I have never done this before, but I was wondering if you would do one cheer with me. I understand that Go Blue might be the appropriate one, so let's try it, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Go Blue! Thank you.